welcome to the session, transitioning from coal reliance to gas power generation. My first question would be to every panelist. What is the role of gas in South Africa's economy? What policies are in place to encourage investors? Mr. Shijaran. Good day, good day everyone. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity to talk. Uh, I'm Akash Lachman, so I think Shurinden is not attending. Um, I'm the SVP for gas sourcing and operations in Sassel, and uh, really pleased to be part of this uh, particular conference. I think uh, if uh, this morning we had, a, we had load shedding, so uh, you know, I think it was a pretty good segue to have this particular discussion, as well as the LNG discussion prior to this. Um, gas will play quite a significant role in the just transition that we see in South Africa. Um, if you look at uh, our current state of uh, energy in South Africa, the economy is highly driven, it's highly in in energy intensive, driven largely by gas as well as, uh, as coal. And if we really, really want to make that shift, uh, gas is probably the most easiest in terms of transition as well as uh, decarbonizing the operations both at Eskom as well as Sassel. Uh, and uh, I think gas is going to be critical especially in the short to medium term and also into the long term to 2050. Um, the previous panelists, GE and the like, talked about gas to power. It is probably one of the most efficient ways to get power into the grid at the moment. Uh, and then our ability to source it uh, at the right price and volumes will be critical. So I think um, it is a, almost a sudden African ink approach that is required to make sure that we can, we can make that happen. So this collective an integrated effort between government and private business uh, to unleash the potential of gas is quite critical. Uh, and it is uh, a way to alleviate especially poverty in the Southern African region, but also build the economy because without gas uh, and into power, I think uh, it, we will struggle. And we've seen that uh, here in South Africa, especially where energy has been, been quite, a, quite a challenge. Uh, so on that basis, I think this is going to be a critical discussion going forward. Thank you. Thank you for that. I would like to pose the same question for Adewale Fayemi. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, first, good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure for me and an honor to be part of this panel. This is a very interesting question. And then clearly, recently, we, the whole world is engaged on transition. And in South Africa, clearly, there is a need for energy. Um, what role is gas going to play there? I mean, gas is going to be part of the transition. You cannot do it without gas. I mean, I would like to say clearly, I mean, uh, gas is a very good ally of renewables. And then we've made discoveries in South Africa as total energies and our partners where we've made the gas uh, condensing discoveries. So we see this as playing a major role in the transition South Africa, I mean, in the energy mix, the shift from coal to more, I would say, to cleaner energy. So that is where we are. And then as a, as a company with our JV partners, uh, we're really committed to making sure that, I mean, these gas resources has been discovered, is brought to shore at the earliest possible time. Of course, we cannot do this on our own. I mean, it's, uh, we need to work closely and collaborate very well with the authorities. And I think um, I stand tall to say that uh, I think the policy makers and the people responsible for implementing the policies, so far they've shown that yes, I mean they're ready to work with the private sector to develop these resources. So we've been having very good engagement with the authorities and the agencies on this. And uh, we're quite confident that we'll be able to develop these gas resources at the earliest possible time. Thank you. Panelists, please do feel free to elaborate further on any um, topic or session. Um, please do feel free. Uh, Denise Simela. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much to actually provide, you know, NASA to be part of this particular uh, conversation. Now, what the question is like, what role will gas play in, 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 in South African's economy? 
in terms of that, you know, gas, we don't have much gas in South Africa. The gas is like, you know, in our neighboring country like Mozambique. However, there's not much gas infrastructure in South Africa except the pipeline from, from Mozambique to, to Sasol. Now, if you look at the integrated resource plan, what the integrated resource plan, which is a policy document, it has actually indicated that, you know, we need to have gas to the value of 3,000 rand between 2024 to 2027. And once we have gas in the country, from gas to power projects, the more that they come, there could be other uses of gas in the country that can ignite, you know, other industries to, to, to start using gas. And in that way, that will actually stimulate the economy in a way. So I think I'll leave it there for now. Thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Mukoka. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for the question and, and good morning to, to everyone. Um, if you look at the, 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 the policy stance from the standpoint of gas, the, the IRP is quite uh, clear of the increasing um, role of, um, of gas in the energy transition. I think that's the first thing I need to, uh, to point out. But the second one is uh, actually the work that has gone into um, the, gas, the gas master plan um, effort for the country, where the focus actually looks at the greater gas play from the north and, uh, and, and the south. Um, and, and if you look at the Central Energy Fund, for instance, uh, we recognize that importance of the role that gas plays in, in our uh, recent position on the, on the Romco pipeline through, through the increase in our shareholding together with, uh, with, with, with CMG. Secondly, um, uh, as early as last week, we issued a, a request for information to the market in relation to the Kuha LNG hub which covers the, the southern part of the country in relation to uh, the importance of, of gas, not only uh, uh, gas, but also gas infrastructure. Um, so so there's, 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 a, there's quite a significant role that gas is going to, to play. And if you ask, uh, um, uh, me, I'll, ask, I'll just answer it simply. In the just energy transition, you need to address uh, the question of base load and gas becomes quite an important uh, element in, in that discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I always enjoy seeing females in uh, panel discussions because <laughs> women in the energy sector are actually very important. So I didn't give you last for nothing. <laughs> I would like to hear uh, your comments on this, on, uh, this topic, please. Sure, good morning, everyone. So I think, firstly, let's start with looking at what role gas has been playing to date. Um, it's seen primarily as a backup power, expensive peaking power, but I think we all agree that there's a bigger role for gas to play. And I think we've already just alluded to it when we talk about coal to gas conversions. We need to start looking at gas as a base load replacement. And also with the country's ambitions around the significant injection of renewables, to manage the intermittency of renewable power, gas has to come in as a flexible fuel source um, for our grid. Um, and I think we've just touched on the infrastructure build-out that is required. The ripple effect of those large infrastructure projects is what is needed in our country from a socioeconomic impact perspective. Um, and then just, I think everyone has already mentioned it without being too repetitive, but as we transition to a lower carbon um, economy, gas is going to play an incredible role in partnership with renewables in getting us to those obligations that we've made as a country. Thank you very much. Um, the following question, I would like to pose it for Mr. Vuyelwa Manyayele. Excuse, ex forget, sorry for miss. <laughs> Excuse me for the pronunciation. Um, with South Africa's energy sectors dominated by coal, how can it position itself in the era of uh, the energy transition? Well, I think we've already started um, with our reprogram, which has been a roaring success that has been recognized the world over. But now with our more concerted efforts around the coal replacement, um, and I think for us, it's important that we realize it's not a first. And so there are references and countries that we can look to in terms of how it can be done. 
um, countries like Poland, countries like China and India who have gone through a similar path. Um, and so just in terms of the role that gas is going to play along that transition in particular, it's important that we bring everyone alongside the entire value chain. I think power is seen as the major off-taker, an anchor off-taker for gas once it comes in country. But there's an entire value chain downstream moving all the way up into the power plant where there's an expectation of um, beneficiation across that value chain. Um, maybe let me leave it there for now and just let the other panelists weigh in. Thank you for that. Mr. Mukoka would like to add to that. Um, no, thanks. I just would like you to come again on the question. With South Africa's energy sector dominated by coal, how can it position itself in the era of energy transition? No, thanks. I, I think for me, the, the, the important thing to uh, realize here is that you will have conversion, um, and, and, and that's where gas becomes quite important uh, in relation to uh, that just transition. Um, but you'll also have uh, to have, uh, at some point, a serious conversation around uh, the new fleet once the, the conversion debate is, uh, or, or implementation is, um, is, is settled. Um, and, and I think for me, my introduction um, spoke to two aspects that could be quite helpful for South Africa to, to pay um, attention to. So you have a Romco pipeline and, um, and, and two adjacent power stations that you can leverage in terms of gas. Uh, the second thing relates to um, the work that um, uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the CDC, SEF and Transnet are already doing uh, down south, but also uh, the partnerships that we are having with uh, uh, also the likes of SASOL around how we uh, uh, monetize uh, gas in a way that um, uh, answers the just energy transition um, uh, call in relation to um, industrial demand, but also bridging the gap for uh, that energy deficit that we still, uh, we still have. And what needs to also be looked at is the socioeconomic um, implications of this conversion because we need to start asking deeper questions of uh, what are the forward and backward linkages uh, within this um, uh, conversion that we need to have and how does it link to um, uh, industrial policy and uh, um, uh, greater downstream uh, uh, industrial forward linkages. Thanks. Thank you for that. Would any panelists like to expand? Yes, I can. And then I'll start with the integrated resource plan. If you look at the integrated resource plan 2019, you know, it already indicates that, you know, by the year 2030, you know, we're going to decommission 10,500 megawatt. And then it shows clearly that, you know, as a country, we're moving away from coal and going, going to, other, to other technologies. And then gas is one of the energy mix, and then it will really play a, a big role in South Africa in that regard. Like for instance, we do have you know, uh, IPP picker station, uh, they design an Avon owned by GDF Source. Those ones, even the, the way that they're designed, they're designed in such a way that you know, once we have gas in the country, you can convert those two picker stations to, 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 to close cycle gas turbines. And those cycle gas turbines, you know, they are adjustable and they are dispatchable. They operate far much better compared to coal. So South Africa will benefit a lot, you know, once you can be able to get gas, either importing it as LNG or even, like, you know, getting it from the neighboring countries, you know, because currently, you know, there's a talk that, you know, they say the south, southwestern power pool and the South African power pool are going to be interconnected. And once that happens, we can be able to source even you know, or to import power from other countries and make sure that you know, gas is used effectively and optimally. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, before I move on to the following questions, I would like to get some engagement from the audience. Uh, does anybody have any questions for the panelists at the moment? 
I just want to have a little bit of uh, interaction between the panelists and uh, the audience. Okay, I'm coming right now. Thank you. My name is Flora von Mukath from the Mozambican Oil and Gas Chamber. I would like to ask the panelists, uh, given the challenges that South Africa is facing, and, and of course the urgency in terms of the transition from coal into gas, what sort of formal and long-term engagement are you looking at with Mozambique to assist you in terms of feeding the gas into South Africa and the South African market to sort out all your challenges? Thank you. You're free to respond. I'm not sure to whom you are directing the question, but panelists, uh, please do feel free. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much. And I think I'll start and uh, uh, Cash, we are partners in, in this uh, with uh, the, the, the Mozambican um, counterparts. Look, we, we, we have been engaging for some time in relation to the, the gas reserves that are in, in area one um, and, and, uh, and Matola LNG um, with, um, uh, with the Mozambicans. And I think uh, ENH in, in, in particular, there's been, there's been engagement that um, um, is ongoing. And I think as about just over a month or so ago, we did have um, engagements with the delegation from uh, Mozambique around these partnerships and I think um, we are moving in a direction that is quite useful in as far as creating a, a market for that gas in Mozambique and also in South Africa is concerned. Um, I think that's as far as I'll leave it uh, because the other details are, are details that are still between uh, Mozambique, South Africa and uh, uh, our partner as well. Cash? Yeah, thanks. Uh, th thanks for the question. I think uh, maybe my brother in arms, uh, Dr. Makoka, uh, really pleased to have the, the relationship with, uh, with SAF, uh, and that's really tangible uh, in terms of getting projects uh, for procuring gas in the southern African region. So, um, but let me talk to Mozambique first. I think we, we've had two decades uh, of presence in the country, and, uh, and I think uh, the Honorable Eric mentioned that we, we got the model right. So. I think huge, huge efforts to try and partner where we can find win-win relationships uh, in terms of uh, exploring for gas as well as engaging or enabling, let's say, an LNG terminal where we could bring that gas into the southern African market and then working jointly because we can't do this ourselves. Um, and I think that's where we would see the engagement with Mozambique as well as South Africa. So I, I keep on talking about a a Southern African Inc. approach. And if we can work hand in hand in terms of finding those solutions where all of us can play in the game to grow the economies, the gas economy specifically, uh, and as, as well as stimulate socio-economic growth in both the countries, which we've seen. Uh, you know, if, if we just look at what we've done now in Mozambique, we've taken almost a billion dollar investment decision earlier this year, where we take a large percentage of that gas into power generation for Mozambique and then the balance of the gas goes to South Africa. And then to Dr. Makoko's point, if we can get the, the couple of power stations converted here in South Africa, I think that will be a game changer. Um, but then maybe just to expand on how the gas market looks like and maybe you know, extending the conversation if you allow me, Chair. Um, you know, the market is split uh, in a sort of one third, almost two thirds into Sassel, largely for fuels as well as chemicals production and one third into the market and very little for power generation. So the opportunity is there, the infrastructure is there, some infrastructure is required. So that's where the governments, as well as private sector, can in engage to make sure that we enable investment for that to happen. Uh, and I think uh, we are deep in discussions with, uh, with ENH, and uh, we hope to, to build that relationship together with the South African government going forward, especially with CEF. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, so sorry, Sandra. There's one more question. Apologies for that. Thank you so much, Akash. Thank you, Yali. Thank you. Hello. 
Um, my name is Elaine Mills. I work for Argus Media. Uh, my question is to Tatao's Mr. Fayemi. Um, Mr. Fayemi, I was just hoping you could give us an update on exploration um, and drilling of the Brill, Pada and Laipat prospects um, and a possible timeline for when you see first gas coming from those prospects. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a very good question. Um, I clearly, you're aware we drilled two wells on Block 11B, 12B. Blue powder in 2019 was successful, and then Lloyd in 2020. So, which was also very successful. But at this point in time, um, you know, as with exploration activities, we think clearly that we have resources that are there that can be developed. But then now, it's uh, how do we get it to the market? So, uh, in the south, if I piggyback on what the last speaker said, you've got infrastructure available. But actually, in the south, because we're deep, we're deep offshore, okay, uh, deep in the south, 200 kilometers from shore, there is no real infrastructure existing today in the south. So the first thing is we need to have the infrastructure being developed, okay. Meanwhile, I mean, creating the market for the gas. Then from that point on, yes, we will proceed with development. Um, Yes, we do have the gas to liquid refinery that is uh, probably the only market that's available today, but it's very limited. So we are working as a JV to see how fast we can bring the gas to shore. But of course, I mean, we're not going to do this on our own. It requires uh, engagement with the government so that the market can be created, that the infrastructure will be there and also engaging with SF and PetroSA, who are the owners of the gas to liquid refinery. So these questions are ongoing. Can I give you a timeline right now? You know, it's um, where we work, it's, it's unique in the world. Okay, I'm sure you all know what the Agulas current is, uh, the second fastest uh, ocean current in the world. There hasn't been any development in this area. But yet we've drilled the wells, we're confident we'll be able to develop it. So that's one. So, but once the infrastructure is there, then we'll be able to determine the, the timeline and then hopefully uh, bring the gas to shore as soon as possible. And this is our commitment to the SEF, Petrosa, and the authorities. But a lot depends on how far we land our discussions and the infrastructure. So I'm sure, among, I mean, third parties I'm sure will also be called on by the government in terms of building this infrastructure. And well, let me leave it there for now because I'm sure there will still be other questions relating to the same. I hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Adewale. Uh, before we carry on uh, with the program, um, Sandra, there's one more question from the audience member, and then we can carry on with the other questions that are highlighted there. I'm right here, Sandra. Right here. In front of you? I'm right here. <laughs> I still can't see you. The light is... <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tabo uh, Mukwena. I'm from the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. Uh, I would like to you know, to comment, uh, Mr. Fayemi. Um, but there is only one thing, I mean, that I see that he is non-committal to it. I hear the question of the infrastructure. I think um, we would want to hear a clear commitment as well in terms of when this will come into production. I think um, apart from that, there is a need for a conversation around the development of uh, infrastructure, and so we do take note of that. And the, the government would also need to come to the party. Um, we, we are aware of the, the work that is being done, um, you know, the conversations that are taking place between 
uh, government and, and total. Uh, the other point that I want to, to raise, which is something that I believe without changing the narrative, uh, we are saying that we are transitioning from uh, coal to gas. In my view, the, the narrative, I want you as the panelists maybe to comment to this. We must never try to create any platform um, for people to begin to think that uh, as a gas sector, uh, there is an element of excitement that is developing that, uh, you know, because of the way people have been, uh, or coal is being labeled, we understand as a country, we have a program. We also subscribed to the just transition. But if you are going to talk about moving from one energy source to the other, like as if, but talk about yourself. And so I think the conversation should be, how can we develop the gas uh, industry instead of saying that we are transitioning from uh, coal to gas, like as if you are now celebrating that. But we understand as the country, we have to uh, you know, subscribe and we're subscribing to the just uh, transition. And we're saying that that will be done in accordance with the pace that we have put for ourselves as the, as the country, because we have many energy sources that must be embraced. I think uh, Dr. Mkoka has covered this, that when you look at our IRP uh, 2019, we have those different sources uh, of energy. We call it uh, mixed energy uh, or different technologies. And so that is my plea uh, to the, the colleagues that are in this conversation. Let us um, focus on what we want to achieve uh, pushing, and, I mean, yes, uh, forward, but not uh, saying that, you know, uh, you are creating a wrong impression, on the other hand, that uh, maybe coal is bad and that and all those things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Any you. Any comments on that, panelists? Uh, I'll comment on that, and I would say I agree. There is no one-size-fits-all technology when it comes to decarbonization. It still requires a holistic energy mix and also a simultaneous balancing of affordability, reliability, and sustainability. And there isn't a single technology that can tick all those boxes. So completely agree that as we speak about gas today, it needs to be considered in relation to other technologies. Um, from where we sit, we see the complementary relationship between gas and renewable power being the fastest and most sustainable path to decarbonization. Thank you. Um, our following question is on renewable energy. Renewable energy independent power producer uh, procurement, what does it mean for the country? Um, no, thanks. I think maybe before answering that, that, that question, I would, I would like to, to touch on what the DG has uh, uh, indicated. You know, if anything, South Africa needs to be a leader in um, uh, clean coal technologies, uh, a leader in the uh, UCG space where you, you start to look at the much more cleaner ways of creating um, gas from the underground uh, uh, deposits and, and really start to also be a leader in, uh, in carbon capture because if you don't look at the transition from the standpoint of um, uh, an investment decision that you'd normally take when you are presented with a term sheet, you'll start to take uh, uh, decisions in your transition that are not commercially sustainable. I think that's the one thing that we need to be quite careful of as a, uh, as a country, such that even in the gas um, 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 conversation, technologies that deal with co the conversion of the coal deposits uh, also become um, quite important. And moving to the question that um, has been asked, how important is uh, renewables in the just energy transition um, 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 debate? 
Um, within the context of South Africa, again, I, I have to go back to the IRP. That recognition, it, it, the IRP recognizes renewables as important, and the REAP program as well um, cements that recognition um, in a manner where, from the standpoint of uh, policy making, we're starting to see investment uh, actively go into uh, renewables. And, 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 and the, the economics of renewables um, getting uh, better over time also presents an, an opportunity where it is over time becoming much more cost effective uh, to have a, a much more sustainable, sustainable renewables drive. But what becomes important in the renewables uh, uh, space are the competing technologies uh, that are at play, and, and I think that recognition of the competing technologies becomes important so that we do not have a debate of a technology, but we have a debate of competing technologies that could link back to the, the forward and backward linkages that um, could actually not create problems when we want to talk about value creation and value addition, where energy is, a, is an input into the production process. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone from the audience like to comment uh, on this specific topic? The room is quite full, um, and I would just like to see a little bit of more engagement to you know, get the best of uh, this session, and the reason to why you actually chose to attend this specific session. So please, let's engage. I am keeping time. Your list I will control. But I would just like to see more engagement. There's a reason to why this session was chosen and is full. Yolisa? On my way. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Robin Sutherland. I'm from a project called the MSAT project, which is a Mozambique South Africa power project. Um, I won't go into that now. It's not my forum. I'm very, very surprised to hear clean coal coming back into the conversation here. It's not catered for in the IRP. There's no investment in coal planned by the DMRE at any point in the future. Uh, I don't understand why that's back on the table. You talk about forward and backward linkages, but the most important thing for South Africa now is to get power back into the system so we can actually grow our economy. We can't do anything because the power keeps going off. Uh, how are we gonna do that quickly? And then how do we build on that to create a sustainable future? And, and there are many economic summaries that show that coal just is the worst possible thing to do from an economic perspective and is incredibly difficult to finance. So can we not just get that off the table and move forward with cleaner technologies that allow us to build our economy here. I live in Cape Town, by the way, despite the accent, so I'm talking as a, a South African taxpayer and, and resident rather than some, uh, some expat. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I assume that that question was directed at me, so I'll answer it. I, you know, it, it, it's quite interesting um, that every time there is a, a discussion around the just energy transition um, and, and various technologies are considered um, in, in the permutations of this just energy transition, the, the clean uh, coal technologies are, are excluded. Um, it, it does not make any economic sense for South Africa to not think beyond 2030 in relation to what are you going to do with the, the mineral resources that you have in relation to the possible clean technologies that, that are there. And, 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 and I appreciate the um, uh, economics much, much... Uh, uh, more than maybe uh, uh, the, the, the speaker might, might indicate on, on, on this one. What I know is that if you are well endowed as a country with a resource and there's an opportunity to develop clean uh, technologies in relation to coal, 
no one else is going to champion that um, uh, agenda for you. No one else is going to uh, drive those investments in R&D and commercialization uh, for you as South Africa. Um, and, 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 and I think we can learn this lesson quite well from the OPEC countries that in dealing with their natural endowments, they did not wait for anyone else to put um, cleaner technologies um, in relation to their natural endowment uh, on the map. They actively participated in funding research, in taking this matter in the, uh, the, the global stage. That's why today you're speaking about uh, clean fuels and not the total obliteration of the use of uh, uh, petrol and diesel. That is the type of attitude as I think as a country and as South Africans, we need to develop that. We have a responsibility as a people to develop technologies around the competitive and comparative advantage uh, from a resources uh, standpoint. No one else will develop those for us but ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other panelists would like to comment on that? No? Audience? Yolisa? Got you. Um, can we, uh, just to, to notify you, Sandra, we have got about seven minutes left, and if there's any other additional questions, may we please keep it brief, just for time, I understand, sir. So well, can you please keep it brief? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I should stand up so that I can emphasize my point. Uh, <clears throat> As I've explained that, I come from the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, not uh, the Department of Renewables. Now, we, we need to appreciate that, that uh, in our IRP, we are talking of uh, different technologies. Um, it is important that when we come to platforms like this, we must be able to assert our authority as a policy department, uh, because the narrative may be driven to a different direction if we don't emphasize this point. The IRP 2019 makes a specific reference to gas. We have 3,000 uh, megawatts for gas. We also have um, hydro, we have uh, storage, we have coal. And we are saying on coal, I know that uh, we are talking of gas here, but because some speakers are just dismissing the whole issue of coal, that is why I think I appreciate the feedback from Dr. Mkoka that let us invest more on research and development. That is what we should be doing or talking about uh, in support of all the technologies that you are embracing. This is African Energy Week, and we are talking of different uh, you know, uh, technologies uh, that uh, we need to consider. Now, we do have other international organizations. It's a pity that uh, the CEO of Council for Geoscience has left. We are working on a project where we are investing on uh, carbon capture, uh, storage, and utilization. And that project is taking off and is moving very well. And some international organizations are also participating in it. They are funding it. Now, colleagues, my message to you is that let us respect policy decisions of different governments. Um, we make decisions as governments and we have to follow. And we can't just in the middle of the, you know, the implementation. Now, abruptly, you decide that, no, I'm not going to implement this, or because of some lobbyist, you decide that, no, no, I'm not going to proceed with the implementation of this policy because there are people that are making noise out there, and so it can't be right. I think let us study and respect what countries, what governments have committed to do and without just saying that, no, this one can't work. And so that is not right. Thank you. Thank you for uh, thank that. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Um, there was one more question, and please may I reiterate to keep the questions as brief as possible. We have got about four minutes to close, so we just want to really run tight on time. Apologies for that, Sandra. Um, one more question. Kindly keep it brief, sir. Thank you. Um, I think my comment is more for and about our people. So the fact that it is just the just energy transition doesn't make it justice for the men on the street. Because in as much as the renewable energy program has resulted in the renewable energy assets that are listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange perform very well. To what extent has it made life better for the men that is in the streets of the Johannesburg, of the city of Johannesburg? That's the first question. And the Green Revolution should be underpinned by an industrial revolution that ensures that in as much as this transition, the implication on the sectors and the industries that have been supporting the legacy energy generation technologies that are no longer clean, to what extent have we ensured that we still maintain and sustain food on the table uh, for our people in the new dispensation from a Green Revolution perspective? Thank you. Thank you, Yulisa. Do we still have time for closing remarks? Uh, we can have one minute closing remarks for each and every speaker, and then we'll close the session. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you. Um, so please, transitioning from coal re reliance to gas power generation, I will start from Cecil and come in this side, and we close the session. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. Quite an interesting debate. I think maybe just a comment from a macro perspective and to uh, DG... Uh, you know, I think the, from, a, from a just transition perspective, um, the mining industry is quite significant. So there are many people, and the guy talked about justice for the people, right? So I think one would have to be extremely responsible how we transition so that those people can still have jobs and that we grow the jobs pool so that more people can get employment. So the way we, way we look at the coal industry, the way we look at the gas industry, and the way we look at renewables, needs to be extremely carefully thought through. Uh, whether we could do that shift in terms of how the developed countries are doing it, I'm not sure. Not necessarily for the socioeconomic uh, situation we find ourselves in the Southern African region. So I just want to make that macro comment. Then if I move to, to Sassel, I think uh, it's, it's very clear that we still run a large percentage of our secondary operations on coal. And if you look at our capital markets day, we, there's huge efforts to drive efficiency on those facilities to make sure they still can run. And then there is a transition to gas to try and decarbonize that agenda. But very responsibly, because we, we employ thousands of people in the coal mining industry as well as the gas, uh, the gas space. And then maybe to our long-term strategy where we're looking at moving into green hydrogen, that's also done extremely responsibly. But if you just look at the recent announcements we've made in Bukhabai, as well as the renewable power agenda, both in Sasseberg and Sukunda, I mean, that will stimulate many jobs. Uh, those are over and above what we have in our gas and coal facilities. Uh, and then lastly, we're piloting the hydrogen facility in a, Sukunda, in a Sasseberg facility that utilizes gas. So I think the, the way we transition, the way we manage the transition, the way we manage people's lives in terms of jobs, the ability to reskill them, the ability to develop the capabilities to, to transition is not something that we can do overnight, but it's something that we have to carefully and responsibly manage, uh, especially for the Southern African region. And that, we, I speak to that largely from a Mozambique as well as a South African perspective from, from, for Sasol. Uh, Chair, I want to thank you for the, for the opportunity to sit here with the, the honored guests. Uh, thanks for the comments that are made, and I think uh, lots to learn and lots to... Uh, to to take from the conversation. Uh, just the last comment, we can only do this if we join hands. Um, uh, you know, we have to join hands with governments, we have to join hands with the private companies, and we have to create win-win relationships. Otherwise, this won't, just won't happen. Um, so, uh, thank you for the opportunity, and I think, uh, rather than look at this as a challenge, let's look at it as an opportunity, always the, half, the glass half full, right? 
And I think that if South Africa is so well endowed with mineral resources um, and, and renewables and the like, and if we can manage that properly together, I think we will really win. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I kindly ask for a very quick uh, closing remark from all the panelists. Sure. So I think the catchphrase has been gas being a transitionary fuel. Um, and, and let's see it as exactly that. Um, the destination fuel, I think, is what is being alluded to as hydrogen long term, where we are producing our own hydrogen in country and generating power from it. Um, that's the end game. And the good part is that technology already exists today to produce power from hydrogen. And so we will not be reinventing the wheel. Um, and maybe to also just lend from what you closed off around partnerships. The models around these projects are going to be very complex and will require partnerships be between both public and private sector um, to enable them. Thank you. And I would just like to thank you for giving you know, NASA an opportunity to be part of this particular debate. And I'd like to emphasize one point that was mentioned by Advocate Tabo Mkwena to say that, you know, gas is one of the energy mix. And if you look at the approved policy document, which is the RP 2019, it's got gas, it's got renewable energy, it's got uh, coal as well. So at the moment, we should concentrate on trying to implement the plan itself, you know, and. One of the roles that NASA does is to make sure that, you know, that particular plan is implemented and is done orderly and to ensure that, you know, it's for the benefit of the entire country. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much and, 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 and thanks for, for also inviting uh, Seth to be part of this um, uh, panel. I just want to say two things quickly in, in, in closing. Um, I think Africans need to understand that we as Africans need to uh, write our own uh, story in relation to the just energy transition. And, and just a quick note that uh, the backlash that you are seeing on, on coal uh, in the gas space has started with the developed uh, country finance ministers taking a position that uh, would make gas funding quite difficult. So as Africans, if we do not realize that uh, uh, the starting point from a, even a funding standpoint is, is becoming quite difficult in as far as gas is concerned, let alone, let coal, let alone uh, coal, we will be misdiagnosing uh, our starting point. And I think it is up to us to um, have institutions that are going to embrace uh, the funding of the just energy transition that takes into account our starting point from a base load standpoint as, uh, as, South, Af as, as South Africans and all Africans uh, in the continent. And remember, what becomes important in the just energy transition is um, a view that is continental and a view that is uh, collaborative so that we can build institutions that can protect uh, our starting point uh, in as far as the just energy transition is concerned. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, I would like to touch on two things, uh, two as closing remarks. The first one being the fact that our commitment to accompany South Africa in its uh, in the just transition, okay, energy just transition, it's twofold, okay, clearly. For the domestic gas, I mean, with the IRP 2019, clearly, I mean, this IRP, DG, if you permit me, was put in place before the discovery of leopard. So I would like to claim your indulgence to say that maybe the fact that we have more gas now should be taken on board and maybe give more, I would say, megawatts to be produced from gas to power. That's the first thing I would like to say. So this way, we can actually then maximize, I would say, gas to power uh, in the mix of the energy transition. So the JV partners are committed to that. And now, the second point, it's on 
I mean, to its total energies. As you all know, about five months ago, uh, we changed them from total to total energies. It was not just for change sake. It was clearly to tell the whole world that total energies is a broad-based energy company, okay, that plays, that wants to play a major role in the energy transition, the dust transition, but in renewables and as well, I mean, gas, gas to power and electricity. So clearly in the energy mix for South Africa, we are heavily present in this country. We're ready as a company to work with the authorities in making sure that we meet the demands of the people when it comes to electricity supply. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to all panelists and uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen. Yulisa, over to you. Thank you.